Come on, tell these kids what a magnificent job they did today. That's so great, so great. Praise God. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. I want to say to all of you who are joining in at all of our campuses, we're so delighted that you're here. And I would love for all of the mothers at every campus to stand up on your feet and let us tell you how glad we are that you taught us how to talk to Jesus. Let's hear it, church. We love you. We appreciate you. Such a blessing to have the mother of my five children, Sharice, here, and then my mother sitting down here on the front row. Katie is in the house, and Sharice's mother, Pat, is in the house, and we love you guys and don't have words to tell you how much we appreciate all that you are and all that you mean to us. And I know you feel the same way about your mother, don't you? I dressed up and I wore a suit just for my mother today because she likes to see me wear a suit and a tie and it's Mother's Day and I I probably do this once or twice a year, so enjoy it, amen. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to open them with me to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter six. And I wanna teach today from Ephesians chapter six. And I pray that God uh, speaks to you the truth of his word. Sometimes we teach because we are always mindful of a new generation coming up. And especially on a day like today. And I want you to see Ephesians chapter 6. We'll begin reading with verse 2. I'm going to read it off of the screen just like you. Everybody out loud, honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. That's it. Honor your father and your mother. And then he adds a blessing. Of course, it is one of the top 10 commandments. As a matter of fact, if you are interested, Ephesians chapter Six is the great relationship family chapter. It teaches you, it talks to parents, it talks to spouses, it talks to children concerning their parents. One of the 10 commandments, the top 10, out of all the things that God could have said, this matters the most to me about. One of them is you shall honor your father and your mother. You say, well, pastor, what will happen if I'll do that? The Bible's very clear. It's the only commandment that comes with a promise. He said that you will live long and your life will be full of blessing. We equate blessing only to money and stuff like that. No, 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 no. Blessing means that there is the help of God, no matter what life brings, good, bad, or ugly. The blessing never leaves that house. And he said, it's connected how you honor God. Listen carefully, how you treat and honor God is connected. And God says, as you honor your parents, you honor me. Well, pastor, you don't understand. My parents are flawed. Well, that's funny because every parent is flawed. Your parents are flawed. Their parents were flawed. If you're a parent now, you're definitely flawed. And when your children become parents, they're going to be flawed. And God designed it that way that there are no perfect parents. And that way there's no excuse to not honor the position that they have given you. Even if you don't feel like you can honor the person. The second reason that you ought to honor them is because you would not be alive without them. God chose them to be the method through which you would come into this world. God used their DNA to make you. And Psalms 139 and verse 13 puts it like this. In verse 16, I'm going to combine them together. 
God knit me together in my mother's womb. And he recorded every day of my life before I was born. God had a plan for your life. And God understood that you would not be you if, two, if any other two human beings, your mother and your father, had not been who they were and not gotten together, it would not uniquely have created you. You would have been someone else. You wouldn't be you without your father and your mother. There are no accidental babies. There are accidental parents. There are illegitimate parents. But there are no accidental, illegitimate children. Your parents may not have planned you, but God did. That's what the Bible teaches. Well, why did God give me the parents that he gave me? Because they had the exact DNA needed to create you. No other two individuals, the exact chromosome and DNA to create you. That's why you should honor them. That alone is the reason. God was more interested in creating you than their parental skills. God was more interested in that than he was. And you know, I, I, I tell a story sometimes. I'm not going to take time to do it, but it's the truth. That sometimes some of you may say, well, I can't honor my dad because he was never in my life. Or I can't honor my mother because she was a terrible mother. But please understand that sometimes God will give you a parent. And he trusted them to get you here, but not carry you through life. Because had they stayed with you, they would have taken you into all kinds of addiction, pain, sorrow, or whatever. And so, but God said, I so want you uniquely to be here. I need these DNAs and I've planned every day of your life. If some, how many of you know that, and how many of you would agree that some mother went through labor and pain to get you here today? Let me see your hand and the rest of you are liars. Turn to somebody and say, do you realize what a pain you were? That's why you ought to honor your mother. If for no other reason, what a pain you were. We're not all moms, but we all had a mom. And the Bible said, if you had a mom, you're the one that is required, one of God's top 10 to honor your mother. How do I honor my mother the rest of my life? Three quick ways. Real simple message. See, in life, you have stages. You have childhood where you honor your mother one way. And then you move up into young adulthood. Teenage, late teenage, and young adulthood. You begin to relate to your mother in a different way and honor your mother and your father in a different way. And then finally, there's adult to adult. As your mother or your father or both get older, you relate to them in a different way. So how do I honor my mother all the days of my life? Well, when you're a child, you honor your father and your mother by obeying them. Don't say I honor my father and my mother. I love my father and mother. You honor them when you are in their household by obeying them. Following instructions willfully. You do it cheerfully. You do it immediately. And the more you obey them in your house, when you're living in their house, the more you honor them. Listen to this verse, Ephesians 6 and verse 1. Children, obey your parents. This is right. This is the right thing to do because God has placed them in authority over you, one translation says. They're in authority over you. One of the greatest life skills that, that we must teach our children is to respect authority. There are three God-ordained authorities that God has established himself. And if anyone wants to have a miserable, unsuccessful life, then you break these three God-ordained authorities and disrespect them and do not obey them and you will be a failure in some way major. It will catch up with you and be miserable. What are those three ordained authorities? 
God has put authority in the home. That is the father. That is the mother. God has put authority in the church, spiritual authority. And you cannot, you cannot do just any way you want to with the authority of God's word and with spiritual authority. And then in government, God has established authority, the authority of government that if you can't respect the person, you respect the position and you show honor, you show honor. We must teach our children honor in the home, honor in the school to teachers. Even if the teacher is a jerk or the, or the a policeman is a jerk, you show honor to the position. It's government, it's home and it's church honor, honor your parents by obeying them. And then secondly, when you begin, begin to deal in the teenage years and young adult years, you honor your parents differently than just everything they tell you to do. You do it because you're beginning to get out, especially when you start leaving their home, especially when you start getting out on your own and making your own decisions. So how do you honor your parents at that level? You honor them, listen carefully, by respecting them. The number one thing the enemy will try to do to teenagers and to young adults is get them to disrespect their parents. Leviticus 19 and verse 3, each of you must respect his mother and father. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse nine, we respect our parents, even when we don't agree with them, even when we don't agree with what they're saying, you show incredible respect. And God says, I honor you when you honor your parents to respect your parents. Doesn't mean you don't see their weaknesses. As a matter of fact, the older that you grow with your parents, the more that you will realize they're flawed human beings just like you are. And if you're a teenager, that's all you see is their flaws. <clears throat> God says, respect them, forgive them, and, 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 and show honor to them. Accepting and forgiving, that's how you honor them. Accept your parents, the good, the bad, the ugly. Well, why should I expect them? Why should I re respect her? Why should I respect him? He left me this, that, and the other. I didn't have a choice for them to be my parents, Pastor Franklin. Well, here's a big revelation. Neither did they have a choice of you being their child. They didn't have a choice in what they were getting either. Respect means accepting and forgiving. And if you want it, you got to give it. We don't diss them. We don't disrespect them. But we honor them, especially in the teenage years, especially in the young adult, late teen, young adult years, by listening to them. Proverbs 13 in verse 1. Intelligent children listen to their parents. Foolish children do their own thing. Going into young adulthood, I'm not bound if I'm out on my own to follow the instructions of everything my parents tell me, but I am bound to listen carefully to them. Even if they're not living right, even if they're terrible in their own life and it's a disaster, I believe and I've seen that most of the time, the parental instinct, even if they're not making wise choices for themselves, the parental instinct for their children is right. What they're telling you, even a heathen or somebody crazy and done all kinds of stupid stuff and made mistakes, when they tell you as the child, they're usually telling you out of their own pain and experience, don't do that. And even a broken clock is right twice a day. 
Just because your mom and dad didn't have it all together doesn't mean that you are not supposed to listen ever to anything they say. Proverbs 23 and verse 22, listen to your father's advice and don't despise your mother's experience in life. God gave you your parents for a purpose. My mother's sitting here, Sharice's mother sitting here, and we, they prepared us to pastor this church. There's no question about it. By the way they raised us, the way they brought us to church, the way that they had God in our families, they prepared us to pastor this church and all of the people. There's no question. I'm so glad that we listened. We listened. We didn't always agree, but we listened. Proverbs 6 and verse 20 says, do what your father tells you, especially if you've got a godly father and a godly mother. Do what they tell you. Never forget what your mother teaches you. Their instructions will lead you, guide you, and instruct you in how to live life. Now, here's, here's, here, here's where we are. As children... You show honor by obedience. As young adults, as late teenagers, 18 and up, you show honor by respecting them. Respect them. Show that to God and show that to them and God will bless you for it. And then there's that level of adult to adult relationship. As your parents get older, as they begin to get aged, the Bible says that you honor them in two ways. The older they get and the older you get, and when they start getting up in life, there are ways that you show honor differently from just obeying and respecting. Number one, when you're Parents are getting older. You honor them by appreciating them. Proverbs 28 and verse 22. When your mother is old, show her your appreciation. Appreciate your mother in two ways. Number one, appreciate their effort. Parenting is difficult. Parenting is demanding. Parenting is time consuming. Have you ever thought how much easier your parents' life would have been if they hadn't had you? In California, they have the big redwood, up in Northern California, the big redwood trees. And the way that they determine how old the tree is, is it forms a red ring around the trunk. Of, uh, of the tree. And in the good years, meaning the years when there's plenty of water, the ring is very thick and very pronounced and very, uh, very, very noticeable. And it stands out. But in the years that were crisis years, the ring around the tree is much, much, much thinner and much lighter to the eye and harder to detect. And the way that they know how old a tree is, is they count the rings. And some of the rings in the good years are just red and they're so obvious. But then there's those crisis years when the line gets barely so thin that you can hardly see it. That really describes what parenting is like. There are those years when everything is wonderful and I'm dedicating all these babies and, 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 and it is amazing and all of that. But I promise you, the moment that you decided to become a parent, you are going to face things that you cannot even imagine. And the line is going to go from thick to thin. And I compare that line of parenting to the color of my hair. When I used to pastor this church when I was 29 years old and we had our first baby, Courtney, who's sitting on the front row, I had jet black hair. Anybody remember those days? I mean, it was black as it could be. And then Courtney came along and that got this side. 
And then Carissa got this side and then Caroline got the top, all of it. And then, and then Connor got this side and Drake got this side. And then the hair on my chest is turning white. That's Cherise. Amen. Because I married her when she was a baby. She was 18 years old. And you can measure the years and you'll look back and some of you think you know everything. You don't know nothing, nothing, but they're worth the effort. I'll tell you that every, even the thin line years, the crisis years, I'll take them. I'll take them. I'll take them because family is the greatest blessing on earth. Clap your hands and say, amen. But have you ever thought about, have you, have you When was the last time you thanked your parents for putting up with you? Let's do it right now. Mom, thank you. I know there was a few years when Doyle and Richie and Jennifer and Jill really did bad and I was always good. Amen. Appreciate their effort. It costs the latest statistic. This is actually about three years old. It's all I could find. It costs to raise a child to 18 years of age before college, $249,000 per child average to clothe them, to feed them, to take care of them, $249,000 per child that is before college and before they move back into your house. Amen. One of the most unselfish decisions a human being will ever make is to become a parent. They're giving it. Think of the car they could have had. Think of the stuff they could have had, but they chose you. So honor your father and your mother. Appreciate the effort. The definition of a parent, according to Webster's Dictionary, is someone who has a photo where they used to have money. I made that up, but it's the truth. It's unselfish. Proverbs 23 and verse 25, this is a powerful verse. If you don't get nothing else out of this sermon, you ought to get this verse. Give your parents joy. May she who gave you birth be happy. Are you doing that? Are you doing your best of your ability? You say, well, how do you give your parents joy? Well, if they're Christians, I can tell you, it's not in anything you can achieve in this world. The Bible put it like this. John said, I have no greater joy than to know my children walk in truth. And that text, they want to take it down too quick. Put it back up. That text says, everybody out loud, give your father and mother joy. May she who gave you birth be happy. Clap your hands if you, if you would say amen at every campus. That's the truth. That's the truth. As we get older, not only do we appreciate their effort, but we are to provide for our elderly parents all that they need. It's sad that in Western culture, we're the only culture that doesn't honor people as they get older like we should. The Asian culture is totally the opposite. The most honored person who will show up in a gathering is the elder. They will all give up that seat and Put that person and make a big deal about that person. In Middle Eastern culture, it's culture, it's exactly the same. In African culture, they honor the elderly more than any. But only in Western culture, in America, the older you are, the less you are respected and valued. And in Western culture, we put emphasis on the younger and we forget about the older. And look where that has brought us to as a culture. What I'm saying to you is value and esteem and respect the elderly, especially aged parents. 
Stay in touch with them. Appreciate them and provide for them. See, what happens is as they get older, the roles reverse. You can't just say, take care of yourself. That's not what a Christian does. You are responsible. You and the siblings have to get together and take care. And it's not have to, you want to. They took care of you and now you are to take care of them. That's natural. That's normal. And that is exactly what the Bible teaches. To not do it is to not honor your father or your mother. First Timothy chapter five, put it like this, that we are to treat the older women like our mother and we're to treat the younger women like our sister. And then he makes this powerful statement, honor the widows and those who are really widows. In the next part, he says, and if, and, and if you listen now, if any widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show provision at home and repay their parents. This is good and acceptable. You want to be good. You want to be seen as good. You take care of your mother. You take care of your grandmother. You visit her. You go see her. You invite her to the soccer game. You include her. You do things for her. You go get things for her. You help her around the house. You, 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 if you have to put in a rest home, you don't forget about them. You go see them. You talk, you take time. God said, if you want to, if you will do this, this first, notice the priority. Don't get up and tell me what a great Christian you are if you can't take care of your own home and repay your parents. Well, it's quiet, but it's right. Think about this. Jesus Christ was hanging on the cross, dying for your sins and my sins. There could not have been a more important mission. It was the most important moment in human history. And Jesus had seven statements that he said when he was hanging on the cross. Seven. He said powerful things like, Father, they're crucifying me, but Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He said on another, a few minutes later, a few seconds later, it is Finished, meaning our salvation is completely provided. And right in the middle of powerful, seven powerful statements, one out of the seven was this. He sees his mother at the foot of the cross and he says, John, his best friend, John, take care of my mother. Provide for my mother. He's dying. But you know what he was doing? He was modeling one of the Ten Commandments. I must honor my mother and take, and I honor my mother in her older years by providing and taking care of her and not forgetting her. Even on the cross, Jesus took care of his mother. First Timothy 5 and verse 8 says, Anyone who does not take care of his or her immediate family has denied the Christian faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Jesus, if I don't take care of my family, if I neglect and abandon my family, I am worse than an infidel. Now see, this isn't going to excite a congregation, but this is the word of God and it may be the key to amazing things that happen in your future if you'll heed it. It's a strong word. You honor God when you honor your parents. I've got two more verses and I'll close. They had the DNA God needed to make you. And there is a severe judgment pronounced in Matthew 18 and verse 6. I want them to put it up. Anyone who hurts a child. And I looked that word up. I looked it up. And you know what it said? It said to abuse a child or to neglect a child. Whoever causes one of these little ones 
who believe in me to sin, it's better for him if a milestone were hung around him. The literal thing milestone has to do with what a donkey would turn in a grinding mill or an ox. It was heavy. It was a huge stone. And literally what he's saying there is if you neglect your responsibility or you harm and you abuse a child, this is the strongest warning you can get from the Word of God. He said it would be better for you. Basically, you know what the mafia, which is called a family, you know what they do to people who, 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 who don't take care of family business? They take them out in a boat, I know, because I watch The Godfather. They, they, take, they take them out in a boat, and they put a cinder block around them in a chain, and they throw them over into the deep ocean. And Jesus said it would be better for the mafia to get a hold of you than me get a hold of you if you abuse or neglect your responsibility for a child. This is strong, isn't it? It's serious. Well, pastor, I, I've been hurt by my parents. God's not asking you to deny that. God's not asking you to excuse it, to repress it, to ignore it. He's not asking you to fake it. Well, if I go around him, I love that story that, I, that Andy Stanley tells in his book. And I, I sat with his father one time for over four hours, Dr. Charles Stanley. And we sat beside each other on a flight, and it was just the greatest thing. We went back and forth, and he told me story after story. And it's no secret. What I'm sharing is no secret. Andy Stanley, of course, just one of the greatest pastors in this area. I love him and honor him. Don't go to his church. Stay here. But he's a great guy. Just throw that in there. And I honor Charles Stanley. But you know what, Char you know what Andy said in his book when he and his father had a big split that took place in their family and he Dr. Stanley this is all public knowledge went through a divorce and it was just terrible and Andy was so hurt and you don't know everything so you shouldn't judge everything because God knows everything and he said me and my father were not on speaking ground but he said, my father had so much wisdom. Listen to this. Because he said he kept inviting me to have a meal at a Mexican restaurant every Wednesday. We would go to the restaurant. He said, sometimes we were so mad at each other and we couldn't stand each other that we would sit at that table and just eat our chips and eat our food and get through it. And he said, but the wisdom of it is dad would call every week. Andy, will you go to lunch? Will you go to lunch? Name that restaurant. Will you go to lunch? Will you go to lunch? And he said, we couldn't stand each other, but we would sit there sometimes. And I'm paraphrasing, but you can read his book. And I just thought the wisdom of that, that dad was breaking down that wall. That dad was, and he said, sure enough, we began to talk. Sure enough, we began to be civil. Sure enough, we began to get along. And now they have the strongest relationship. And God has done so much through that boy and through that father that it's unbelievable. Don't fake it. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not faking it when you sit down with somebody and you got real issues. Face it. Face it. Quit running from it. It's not going to get better. Time heals all things. Lie. It does not. Life is short. Time's running out. You don't fake it. You, you face it. There's things a family goes through. You just have to face it. It takes courage to make peace with your parents. I close with this. The reason you ought to do it is you stop the cycle for the next generation, by the way. You say, well, pastor, my dad left me. I never had a father in my life or my mother was on something or got, on, got off and, and, and I feel like they abandoned me. Well, then God pronounces a special blessing over you that those of us who were blessed with a two-parent home do not have. You have special attention by God according to this text. Psalms 27, I think it is. You know, there you go. Everybody out loud, as bold as you can say it. When my father and my mother 
forsake me, then who? The Lord will take care of me. Clap your hands, every single mother, clap your hands, every single father, clap your hands, you're worrying yourself to death about your kids. The Lord gives special attention to any children that are abandoned. Always. I close with this. Romans 12, come on out, guys. Romans 12, verse 15 commands us to rejoice with those that rejoice and weep with those that weep. For many, Mother's Day is an extremely difficult day. What do you mean? There are many in this room and in all of our campuses and watching online who have lost their mother. Maybe in the last year, maybe in the last few years. How many of you have lost your mother in this room? Let me see your hand. So today is is a day of weeping and yet rejoicing. There are mothers who have lost a child under the sound of my voice by miscarriage or the death of a child in an accident or something horrible happened and it took your child and Mother's Day today is like a heavy weight on your shoulders. There are those of you that have children who are lost, who were raised in kid pack and came up in this church and today they're as lost as they can be. And today it's heavy, we weep. We weep with those that weep. There are those who face delayed adoption and you've tried and you've tried. And then there's those that are facing infertility and you've, you, you just can't seem, you thought by now you would be pregnant this year, but it's just not happening so far. We weep with those who weep. Those who wanted to be mothers, but it hasn't happened. And then in the same service, we rejoice with the mothers who rejoice. There's mothers who had wonderful, incredible mothers, and we rejoice. There's women here who dedicated brand new babies. How many of you have had a brand new baby in your family in the last two years? Let's see your hand. Let's rejoice and may God give you sleep, 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 rest, rest, rest. Foster parent moms, we celebrate you this morning. You make a home for those precious children and give great value. Come on, let's hear it for foster home moms. Incredible, incredible. What about grandmas raising their kids' kids? Can we can we give a big hero? Thank you to grandmothers. We honor you. And we tell you boldly today that the greatest way you can honor your mother is to give your life to Jesus Christ. Stand to your feet, no one moving, no one leaving. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I want to do something a little different this morning. I know it's Mother's Day, but I need to give somebody the invitation because your mother has prayed for you and she may even be in heaven or she may be here. But this is your day to honor her and it starts with honoring her God and his name is Jesus. So pastor, pray for me. I'm not right with God. I'm carrying a load of guilt and shame. I've abandoned some situations I shouldn't have. I don't want to waste the rest of my life. It's not about you feeling condemned and beat up this morning from this sermon. It's about do the right thing. It's not too late to turn the whole thing around. It's for your healing. It's for your family. Don't continue the cycle. Let God begin a miracle and let it start with you this morning. Maybe there's teenagers here that you know you're walking in rebellion. You're not obeying your parents. You're not respecting your parents. You're breaking their heart and you're supposed to bring them joy. It's time to stop that. I command you in the name of Jesus. I beg you, stop that. It's time for joy to come to the home and it starts with you. Pastor, pray for me. I need to get right with God. I want to do it today. If that's you, 
boldly raise your hand high if you want to get right with God. Anyone in this room, raise it high right now. See that hand, I see that hand. Is there another? Raise it high, raise it high. There, 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 there. Anyone else up in the balcony? I'm looking in the balcony. Yes, yes, yes. Anyone else? Anyone else? This is the day. I want every mother in this room who's carrying a heavy thing to give it to Jesus this morning. Would you raise your hands toward heaven all over this room and pray this prayer, Lord Jesus? Come on out loud, Lord Jesus. I really want to please you. I really want to honor my father, honor my mother. I really want to do what you did when you were being crucified. I want to honor my mother today. And so I give you my life, say that. I give you my family. I give you my heart, my pride. Let me be one that reconciles. Let me be one that blesses my family. In Jesus' name, now lift those hands and worship God for just a moment. I got to do what the Lord, I'm trying to get away from it. I want every mother that will to come down and fill this altar. I believe as you come, you stand for your family. You stand for your family. And, and there's no pressure. And if you're not comfortable, then don't do it. But I really want to pray for mothers. Come and raise those hands high. Not in condemnation, not in shame. You're amazing. But lift those hands and say, Lord, here's my family. I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know what's going on in your family. I don't know what's going on. But God does and he cares. And give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. He's going to heal. He's going to heal even in this service. Things that have been going on a long time. He can heal. Just raise your hands, ladies. Raise your hand all over this congregation. Men and women and worship God. It's running after you. Your goodness is running out. Break the cycle, break the cycle, break the cycle. I don't want to be that person. I want to honor what God said honor. I want to respect what God said respect. I'll, I'll respect the position regardless of what the person does. You know what? God will fix the person when you start doing that. And God will fix you in the process. If you want mercy, give mercy. Sing that again. Nobody cares it like you do. And I just feel like, I just feel like singing the song E flat. Great is thy faithfulness. Know the course. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning. Sing it, church. Sing it with everything you've got. All I have He's not going to fail you now. Great is thy faithfulness. Come on, let's go. Sing it, everybody in this room. Great is thy faithfulness.
Hallelujah. Clap your hands and praise the Lord and say, as for me in my house, say it, as for me in my house, say it, as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. There's no curse stronger than the blessing. And it's upon you. Are you ready for the blessing? Raise your hands. If you prayed that prayer of salvation, stop by the Connections Lounge and get signed up for water baptism and begin a blessing in your family. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you, make His face shine on you, be gracious unto you, lift up His countenance upon you, and give you peace and your children and your children's children. Let's go out with that one, the blessing. We love you so much. Thank you for giving. We're seeing a miracle unlike any we've ever experienced in the history of this church in giving as we had a family that has pledged $4 million if we match it. And that means we go above what we did last year and anything above what we did last year this same Sunday counts. And we had a miracle this week of a $500,000 gift. Our grand total is $3.5 million. We are so close to that miracle. Give and God will bless you as we reach all over the world for the harvest. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. We love you so much. Go in God. Go honor your mother. Go honor your father. Go love one another. Be blessed. Happy Sunday, Free Chapel Online. What a powerful message from Pastor Jensen. And what a great reminder to honor our father and mother, especially on a day like today. And if, in case no one's told you this morning, moms, happy Mother's Day. We're so thankful for all the moms, grandmas, and just influential women in our lives. We honor and we celebrate you today. And hey, if you accepted Jesus this morning, our team is celebrating with you. We are so excited for you. This is the greatest decision you will ever make in your life. And we are so excited to have you in the kingdom. So if you accepted Jesus today, text the word YES to 510510. And someone from our team will reach out with you and pray with you. Yes, we also want to invite you personally to get officially connected into the house as an online family member. We say it three million times every Sunday. You guys are a part of the family and yes. we want to get you connected. All you've got to do is go to freechapel.org slash next steps. And there you'll be able to learn all things free chapel, membership, baptism, volunteering and outreach. So much more, all at freechapel.org slash next step. So we want to get you plugged in. Yes. And hey, we want to pray with you this morning. If you have a need, a prayer request, and you just need to talk to someone from our team, we are here for you. So all you have to do is text PRAY to 510-510. And yes, that's a new number. New number. So text PRAY to 510-510. We have a team of people ready to pray with you and lift you up. Yes. Short of text. Like we said, we're a family. We love you guys. And we would love to be praying over you. Also, like Pastor touched on, right before we close, we are in the middle of a giving fund. We are seeing God do crazy things. We want to thank you guys for giving, for sowing into this house. It blesses all of us, and we wouldn't be able to do what we do without your generosity. So from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. And also, like Pastor said, we have $3.5 million raised wow. of $4 million. So crazy. So, close. so we're trying to push forward and get that four million raised so that we can get our new building. Yes. So please feel free to join us and partner your faith and your finances with us for our building fund. Absolutely. And hey, don't forget this December, we're going on a 10 day tour of Israel with Pastor Jensen and Sharice. And you are not going to want to miss this, but you need to get signed up now so you don't miss out on this. So check out LumiereTravel.org for all the information and questions you may have. And again, you want to get signed up soon. Yes. Well, guys, that's it for our time with you this Sunday. Happy Mother's Day again. We're going to pray for you, and then we'll continue on with our day. But, Lord, thank you so much for our online family. I pray they know how loved and seen 
they are by us. I pray, God, you'd bless all the moms out there watching. I pray you'd spoil them just a little extra today. And I pray for every single person under the sound of my voice. God, I pray that this week you would just show out in a crazy way in their life. God, I pray you do a miracle on their behalf. I pray that they feel your love and they feel your closeness this week, God. And by the time we come back next Sunday, we'll have some crazy cool testimonies to share in the chat of all the great things, God, that you've done this week. But Lord, we love you. We honor you. We pray you bless our mothers a little extra today. In Jesus' yes. name, amen. amen. Amen, guys. We'll see you next week. See you next week.